1932 in the richest country in the world. Depression or no depression, you can't hold up progress and men thinking. Somewhere up there, above the pinnacles, someone is perfecting a piece of apparatus to enable aircraft to fly without a pilot. Just set the machine on course, plug in and leave the plane to its own devices. A real achievement. A pity they couldn't devise an automatic pilot to steer a nation through its storms. More ingenuity in speeding delivery of a president's mail. From an airship, important documents flown out from land are dropped on board a warship so that President Hoover can keep abreast with affairs while cruising with the Navy. And the president had plenty to keep abreast of. Then, in front of the very capital of Washington itself, an autogyro, forerunner of the helicopter, sails in to land at the steps of the nation's seat of government. From there, golf clubs at the ready, two VIPs take off, bound for Gettysburg or wherever it is that golfers go from Washington. But the capital has more on its doorstep than autogyros. To disperse an army of over 15,000 demonstrators, the administration calls out troops, soldiers to disperse soldiers. For those that face them are war veterans seeking payment of a promised bonus in order to tide over the hard times. To disperse them, tear gas and bayonets. A demand for help is viewed as an attempted revolution, an attempt to seize the power of government. But a people who hate to accept defeat are not to be put off by force. When the bonus bill failed to pass through, the army before the Capitol accepted the setback with the slogan, let's show them we can take it on the chin. Let's show them that we're Americans. A demonstration to make any administration ponder. To make any administration ponder. In spite of everything, the election of 1932 found the Republicans sure of keeping their power. At the party's convention at Chicago, the delegates listened to ex-president Coolidge when he expressed himself fully in favor of a return of Herbert Hoover. The bad times were the fault not of government, but of world oppression. The party must continue to hold the reins. And Herbert Hoover must be the man in the driver's seat. The maxim that Hoover respected was that of an America of business without federal interference. Depression must be beaten by the people fighting by themselves. An admirable maxim, but inadequate for the crisis of 1932. In contrast to the Republican, the Democratic Convention in Chicago in 1932 was one of fierce thrust and parry. For presidential candidates, two hot favorites. The one, Al Smith, hardened old campaigner. The other, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. A man of anything but humble origins, born and bred on the richest state of Hyde Park, and yet a man who had always tried to understand the other side of the picture. A man whose innate humanity endowed him with sympathy for all people who, as he put it, are left out. But though Roosevelt drew wide support, Al Smith was no mean rival. So the pace of the convention was a hot one. For and against, with speech after speech, wrangle after wrangle, the majority balance of support swayed this way and that. Al Smith was not to give up easily. Then, at last, after bitter battles, the vote was finally cast. And with its casting, something new in American political history. For the first time, a chosen candidate for the presidency flew to the convention to accept the nomination in person. Something new and different. But then this candidate was different. In Chicago, the climax. Before cheering delegates, Al Smith admitted defeat and promised all aid in the campaign to come. 
But though the party might be convinced, they still had to convince the people. The people who must be told, wooed and pleaded with. Then it's the same old pattern, one night stands and whistle stops, to meet and talk to the people. For it's the people who can put you there or leave you out in the cold. Vote for FDR. Vote for Hoover. The choice is all yours by birthright. So think well and make up your mind, for the future of a nation depends on it. <laughs>